I would have to say emotion was crazy. You know, uh, I think that's the definition of uh, this team is just continue to keep fighting. You know, things didn't didn't look so good at the end, but you know we made a promise to each other to keep fighting, and we were gonna keep fighting and just and just let it be. You know, I think that was a great job all around. You know, um, I like to say to the offensive line definitely. You know, giving me time back there, um, the checkdowns. Um, Sean Tyler coming out the backfield, he probably had like six catches in a row. <laughs> you know, and. Um, <clears throat> getting out of bounds, I would just say it was a great team win. Hey, Caleb, did you make that play? Was that a fake spike on yours, or was that called in, or what? It was called in. <laughs> Shouts out to Coach Lester. We heard a whistle on the broadcast just prior to the snap. Was there a whistle there? Uh, I, I didn't hear a whistle, no. Did they have 10 men on the field there? There wasn't anyone lined up there on Jalen to begin with. I mean, yeah, I would just have to say it was a great play. You know, uh, we we practiced that. You know, I think the coaches do a good job preparing us for these situations. And, you know, it's not all often that these situations happen, but, you know, preparation is, is definitely key. And when the opportunity presented itself, we took how it. How often, how often would you say you practiced that play? And to be completely honest, of all the times that you've practiced it, did you ever really think you'd be able to do it in a game? Uh, well, I would have to say, honestly, any time. This situation can go for anything, end of the half, you know, end of the game. If you practice on it, there's no detail, there's no there's no detail that's too little. You know, we practice it, we're expecting to run at any given point. You know, the, the only goal is execution, and we did that. Talk about the routes before you got the one to D, because, I mean, it was like a 12-yarder, a 12-yarder. You got out of bounds, you got out of bounds. Talk about those plays, how important it was, and then what you saw for that play when you got it downfield to D. Um, like I say, man, Sean Tyler, you know, he did a great job understanding the situation. Um, you know, they were in a prevent defense, you know, obviously trying to, you know, play the end of the game. You know, I just took what the defense gave me. They kept taking, they kept leaving the check down, kept taking it, kept taking it, kept taking it. And, um, you know, eventually we made a play and we went from there. Talk about how big it is. It's always big to beat Toledo. They're so good every year. But in a six game season, just talk about how huge this is. Um, uh, well, you know, Toledo is a great ball team. You know, you see I got busted lip. <laughs> um, I know they're disciplined, very well coached. You know, I think that showed on that 99-yard drive that they had. That was amazing to see. But like I say, you know, the definition of just keep fighting. Just keep fighting, put your head down, and you don't worry about the scoreboard. Just let the rest take care of itself. What, what were Coach Shaw uh, Lester's instructions? I saw him talking to you. A uh, number of times on the sidelines. What was he telling? What What was his, the thrust of his message to you? Uh, it was pretty simple. You just like go be you, go be you, and um, you know, I'm I'm thankful that coach trusted me. You know, um, and it was great. You know, I'm just glad that we had a great team win tonight. Caleb, I was near the tunnel uh, at the end of the game, and a lot of the players ran up and said, uh, Miracle at Waldo. I mean, is there any specific name you guys are using for this win? To be honest, n not right now, no. Um, you know, it was a great team win. We all, you know, we enjoyed this victory, and we get, got to get ready for next week. Caleb, what does it say about the resolve of this team, just to be able to overcome all the things that happened in this game, and then you know to be able to recover the onside kick and then execute the two-minute drill. Just everything that went on, and then what does it say about you know you guys to be able to uh, pull it out like you did? Uh, like I say, I think it's just a testament of, of, of this team is to never, never quit, keep going regardless. You know, um, everybody talks about the last play, but honestly, that that's not stood up without without the onside kick. You know, Tiago did a great job um, with the onside kick. We did a great job recovering. You know, it's the small details, you know. And um, like I say, man, it, it's really just being resilient. Those two or three plays that you made um, to Sean on those uh, routes that you out of bounds, but you were getting 9, 10, 12 yards first down, and it was only taking six, seven seconds off the clock. Were you surprised that Toledo was playing that far off and giving you that play? Um, to be honest, I, I, I really do was just taking what the defense gave me. You know, I, I'm just out there trying to execute, trying to play. 
And that, that's really it. You know, my, my goal, the only thought process I had was trying to win this game. Hey, Love, I know it's a game at a time thing, but to come out with this game and a six game schedule, you know, where every game means so much. I mean, what, what does that mean? Especially going to Mount Pleasant next week. Yeah, uh, like I said, this Toledo was a great ball team. You know, we knew we were going to be battle tested coming into this game. Um, I think the biggest thing really honestly was just, we, we was worried about ourselves. You know, we, we're just trying to get better as a football team and, and, and reach our common goal, which obviously is a, is a MAC championship. You know, it's so easy to get off focus and, and, and be distracted, especially with everything going on. But I think as a team, we, did, we do a great job of sticking together, focusing on one thing at a time and trying to execute. Caleb, if you don't mind, I'd like to talk about the moments immediately following the play. Uh, there seemed to be almost, everyone was just sort of looking around like, did, did that really just happen? Does this count? You know, what was going through your mind? Did you know it counted right away? Were you wondering what, what was going through your head? Um, like I said, I seen the opportunity. I seen the opportunity and I just took it, you know. Um, after, after the play, you know, just, it was just a testament of everything and to really keep your head down. You know, this, honestly speaking, this was a growing game. And, and I feel like I grew a lot. I feel like this team grew a lot. Individuals grew a lot. And, and, and I'm excited to see where this can go. Any more questions for Caleb? I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty good. Thank you. Thanks, Caleb. All right, good one. Wow, what a game. Uh, our guys fought. We, we can get so much better. We, we, we made some mistakes and, and went, had ups and downs and had to overcome penalties. And, um, but we just kept fighting. And, uh, and they did a great job of fighting. You know, that last, last two drives were impressive. And uh, with, to watch a young quarterback like Caleb handle himself in that situation, that's prayer. And, uh, you know, I don't call a ton of plays anymore, but I call all two minute drills. So I got to call a ton of plays today, which was a lot of fun. And, um, and I was, I was just proud of the way they fought, you know, Tiago missed that extra point. I was losing my mind and he, he executed beautifully. Um, you know, we have three days in time and uh, coach, coach Palsic called it on the side and we got the job done. You know, we, we, we played a 60 minute game and overcame a lot and, couldn't be more proud of these guys and uh, to win a game that we didn't play great and um, is, is a huge thing. And, uh, you were able to call that play so quickly when Caleb looked like he was going to spike it and throw it out because it looked like it was so quick, you know, the pass, the D, and then he was down. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I've had that play in the air for 20 years. That's a front practice set every day. Uh, we have two different type of, of plays like that. I'm not going to give you the names of them, but one's supposed to look like spike it and it's a pass and one's supposed to be a true spike it. And uh, I told him at the beginning of the drive that when it came up, I was going to use it. And, um, and I just reminded them some of the key points, but we run that play every week. Uh, like I said, I have not in 20 years or whatever, 20 at least 20 years of coaching, I've never called. I've called it one other time, and the D coordinator called timeout. It was going to work, too. Uh, and then to see them execute that, um, was I was proud of them. I was more proud of the way they executed against that drop eight, 3D, five under. I mean, the young kid went check down, check down, check down week. Uh, the Will linebacker started to get aggressive. I came right back with the dig to D behind it, knowing that eventually that guy was going to jump on uh, Sean Tyler. But that, to have a freshman do that and check down and check down and check down, and have the patience with no timeouts to move the ball and then hit the big dig over the middle. And um, it was a real, real impressive game by him that, that last couple of minutes. And we can, we can get a lot better, but just, just the way he handled himself um, was very impressive. Coach, talk a little bit about that swing there where you had three D-backs there. You could not make that stop on fourth down for Toledo there. You didn't get the spot. And then to be able to turn around, you go down double digits and yet accomplish what you did tonight. Yeah, I mean that was a, that was a heartbreaker. There were a lot of heartbreakers, you know. For some of the some of the calls we had them back in third and forever, and then they decided that the pass was across the line, uh, and I thought that was going to be the chance for us to get the ball back. And then 
that there was just no good angle on where, where he went out of bounds. I mean, I didn't think he was anywhere close, but I watched all the replays and there was nothing to overturn it, you know? So that was, that was, that was rough. Cause I thought our defense was playing hard, you know, in the second half when we did score, we scored so darn fast. They were on the field the whole second half. They were gassed and we had Ollie out. Um, so, I mean, I was, I, I was, I knew they were in a tough spot, you know, with being out on the field so much. So, uh, but we just had had faith, you know. We know that we go out there and execute, which we didn't do a great job of today. Um, that that we can score quick, you know. So getting the the momentum of the first one down there, uh, a couple guys made some great plays on that drive, and then um, then we got the onside kick and finished it. But, but we weren't going to quit, you know. You need to have wins like this, you know. We've had a lot of close ones, but one where you claw back in the game, you know, you're good enough to play uh, with this team. We didn't play well enough to stay in it. And, uh, you know, I went for it on fourth down. I probably would have done it again. When the book tells me to go, I go. Might have called a different play. And then when the Darius fumbled, you know, so I was kicking myself for that. Um, but you just got to keep going. You know, we talk about having faith all the time and 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 trusting each other. And, and you know, they did. You know, that was a great execution down. That's not easy to do against a good team. Uh, I didn't know if they were going to pressure us or sit back. And I think they, they decided to make the young kid make throws uh, with eight, a drop eight scenario. And, um, and he did, you know, big throws. I mean, the one, the one up high to D down the sideline, that was a great catch, great throw. That was a design play for that coverage. And, uh, and man, they, the guys made plays, you know, they never quit playing. And that says a lot about a team. Is this a signature win for you? Shoot, I'll take everyone I can get. Mandy, uh, I don't know if it's a signature. I, yeah, I, I love the way we played, you know, that we didn't quit. I mean, we did things to get in our own way. Uh, I think we had some flags that didn't go our way. Um, and it's just, we just never quit playing, you know, and if you're going to, if you're going to go on a run, you got to have those last second victories, you know, where you keep playing and keep playing and keep playing. And we've talked about situational football so much. You all saw how the last season ended our situational football had to get better. And uh, we've been working on it, working on it, working on it. Um, we worked on it in the spring. And uh, and obviously we had a lot of situational football today. You know, we had our uh, our third, our two minute drill, our obviously our spike in situation. Uh, we had an onside kick. And then even at the end, I mean, we were, we we've, we've literally spent so much time on the, the last three plays and how we're gonna play it and how we're gonna do it. And I had a lot of confidence that our defense would get a stop. Did you hear a whistle whistle on the game-winning touchdown? Because we heard it on the telecast. Just Uh, prior to the snap on the touchdown pass? I did not. Thank God I didn't hear it. Yeah, I don't uh, – well, I I didn't know. Did they have a timeout left? Maybe I thought maybe – because last time I called that play, it was like eight years ago, and the the D coordinator took a timeout. And it was was the same thing. It was going to be there. And uh, and they called timeout. So they they were – they were, I think they were trying to trade out a D lineman. And so they had a lot of, I, I think that first second, they had 12 men on the field. Uh, our guys did a good job of lining up. I mean, they had to they had to start the clock, so it couldn't happen too fast. They had to reset the chains because it was a first down. And uh, I think the whistle was, because we snapped it right on, I mean, the moment, because the clock was going to go, like the moment the first down, you know, soon I tell them, as soon as you hear the thing, clap and get that thing started. So it might have been that. But I know as soon as they started that play, we need, I mean, that wasn't for sure going to work. So we wanted to get at least another five plays in. So uh, we snapped it right as the whistle. Uh, they, they ran on the clock again and told us we could. Uh, that might have been the one you're talking about. Okay. I, I'm sorry if you ad- answered this already. You know, Tim, I had to run off and do a couple things to come back to this. Uh, on that drive where you got the quarterback sneak that made it 38-34, were you concerned that your guys were a little bit taking too much time off the clock, just trying to get down the field. I understand that LB had to take what the defense gave him, but were you hoping no. that they could move a little bit faster? No, I mean, we knew we had to get an outside kick. So it, it, to us, if you get an outside kick, you're already on your side of the field. And we thought we only were going to need a field goal, to be honest with you at that point. So you really don't need a lot of time for that, to, to get it, to get the first down to kick a field goal. So I wasn't all that worried. Um, I think Caleb is a little bit green in that the clock doesn't – it restarts – on when it's outside of two minutes. So there was one time I was screaming like a maniac because there was like 2.30 or 2.20. Left. We got out of bounds, which does stop the clock. Um, but once the ball's ready for play, it starts again. Uh, so, yeah, I, there was one play that I thought we were slow. 
because of it, it was a situational football thing that I need to talk to him about. In fact, I've already mentioned it to him uh, because it was now inside of two minutes that stops the clock and we're going. I can call any plain book. Um, but outside of two minutes, it runs. And that's so, yes, there was, I want to say one time that happened and uh, and we wasted, I don't know, probably about 20 seconds. 10 se- I mean, I was just screaming, snap it, snap it, snap it. And uh, and that's that was probably the one time. Other than that, I thought he did a good job using his check downs, getting first downs. The key to a two minute drill is get the first first down. Your percentages of scoring go way up when you get the first first down. And and he knows that. And he just kept checking down and checking down. And that, that check down is what opened up D's catch because we had the same check down with the dig behind it. Uh, and that was a, a great catch, great throw, and, and uh, you know, put us in position to win a game. Coach, the um, running game was very effective at times, but there were times during the game that we got away from it a little bit when we when it seemed like we were really kind of pushing it down their throat. Um, you talked about, you know, you calling the game, and, and uh, uh, I'm just wondering – how you made some of those decisions. On one series, I remember we threw three pass plays and we were three and out, I think. And I yep. thought, well, that was right after, right after a 65-yard touchdown pass to D. We, we were going to try to keep working that matchup. To okay. be honest, we're down. Uh, D's kind of got the guy guessing at this point. You know, he, he just crossed his face. Um, and, and, yeah, I agree with that drive. I wish we would have tried to at least hand one, you know, uh, the great part is Caleb was once, – once we kind of figured out what they were doing, this was – like I think I told you guys, this was one of the hardest game plans I've ever been a part of, not knowing what a team's going to do on defense. And we had no clue because uh, well, we got nothing from the Bowling Green tape. So it took us a while to figure out exactly – they didn't play one snap of too high last week, and we saw a good amount of it today. Um, and we finally were about, we were able to find the ways to get them in conflict where if they wanted to take D away, you saw, you saw Sean Tyler break some long runs. And it was, I mean, we called the same play multiple times, different formations. And, and when they gave us the run look, we handed it and popped it. And when they gave us the pass look, we pulled it and threw it. I think Caleb was wrong once or twice on passes that he should have handed. But I don't know how many times we actually drop back and pass. They're all decisions by the quarterback, you know. And I know at least one of those three plays was an, was an RPO that he chose to throw. You know, I don't know if we ever caused to call three passes in a row, but we also knew late in the game that, you know, Ladarius was out and Kincaid was out. Uh, so we had one running back, really, to roll. And uh, so we, we definitely wanted to use him, but we, we were trying to be smart about it and, uh, and make sure we, we used, you know, our speed to get back in the game. What do you think about the loop roll pick? That wasn't a pick, and they call it an interference, and next thing you know, they score in a huge turn. Yeah, I I have no comment about that call. I'm not allowed to have comment on that call. I I, I saw the replay. You know, they I don't know what they saw, but they saw it. That was a game-changing play, uh, and, um, and we overcame it, you know, bottom line. Is um, you know they they felt like he interfered, you know, and um, you know I was trying. They overturned the one the one that they called on them. They had a conversation and overturned it. So I was hoping they would do that again because I didn't see it originally, but I watched the replay, and um, yeah, I I don't know. It was it was what it was, and we had to overcome it. You know, have, have you ever seen back to back on sportsman like like that after that play? Yeah, that that one. I was upset with our guys after that. I didn't see what Lupro did. I know he's frustrated. Uh, he's really he's still frustrated. I just had to talk with him. Uh, I saw Trey's. You know, I, I talked to them about that. I, I'm not going to tell you what they told me about that because, you know, they, they did what they did. And and, uh, and then we we, we, were, we didn't know what they were going to do. I wanted to see if they lined up. It, it, it could have really hurt us. That's something we're going to talk about this week because we had to waste the time out to get our hands. Onside kick, right? Didn't you think they would? Yeah, well, yeah. We talked a little bit about it, whether they were going to line up. We thought they were going to line up regular and squib. We we talked to everyone in our front line. We didn't think they were going to go onside kick totally. We thought they were just going to do a surprise, to be honest with you. Um, And so we put them out there. We saw the full onside unit on there. I used the timeout. I wanted to get the right guys out there so we could recover it. And – and we did, you know, but, but man, late in the game, you would have liked them to have another time out, you know, and these are things we need to learn. Uh, whether you like the call or not, whether you agree or not, doesn't matter. 
Uh, the Trey one, they said he ran into some guy as the ball was being kicked. Um, I didn't see it. A couple of coaches saw it. Trey didn't, you know, he did, I don't think he meant anything. We'll see it. I'll see it on film, but I didn't see that one. I didn't see either, either one of those, but uh, I, saw, well, I, saw, I, I saw the Trey one. I didn't see the uh, uh, Lupro one, but I'm embarrassed by that. That's not, that's not who we are. I know they're frustrated. I love the fact that Lupro plays with more emotion than any human being ever. And, uh, and the fact that, you know, he got back in the game and calmed down and, and uh, we just, you know, we have, we, we put too many obstacles in front of ourselves today and we have to be better and we're going into a rivalry game and that's going to be physical too. And we have to have better discipline. I was proud of our discipline last week. Uh, obviously this was a big game. Tempers were hot on both sides and uh, you know, really upset with some of the, some of the things that we did and, and we got to get that fixed. Thanks. Coach, apologies if this was already asked, um, but but just obviously we've talked a lot about the six game schedule and how important every single game is. And now to get this one checked off, especially when you guys are going up on uh, on the road into Mount P, um, how big of a weight off the shoulders is this? Oh, it's huge. I mean, beating Toledo, uh, you know, they're a, they're a great team. They have a great defense. You know, that D-line is, is – D-line in the secondary, they got real, a lot of really good players. And, uh, you know, so to get by this game and the way we won and the way we fought, it says a lot about this team, their belief in each other. Um, but every game matters. You know, every West game is huge. Every West game can go down to the, the wire. Um, I guarantee this won't be the last game of the year that goes down to the wire, and we have to execute in those situations and uh, just really – Really proud of the way that the O-line protected. The receivers made those plays. We got the onside kick, and, and Caleb kept his cool. And uh, he, took a, he took a shot in the first half. He's, he probably saw his lip. It's huge. Uh, and he's bleeding, and, and he was just like a warrior, you know. And, that's, uh, and the team feeds off that, you know. So, so yeah, it was a huge win. And, and, uh, and now we got another one uh, in, in seven days. So. Coach, I kind of asked you coming into the week how, how you thought Caleb Ellaby would respond in these pressure situations. Um, how was he able to to seem like get better, you know, and rise to the occasion as the situation got more tense as the game went on? He's got, he's got this demeanor about him. You know, he stays calm. And I, I mean, I flat out told him he was rattled. I mean, we had a touchdown to D in the first half that was just like the one he had in the second half. I mean, it was wide open, and he, he didn't throw it. And he had another one to sky down the sideline that he hesitated uh, pretty quickly after he took the shot to the head. And, and he was just, he was just the game sped up for him again, you know, and I, I called him out on it and I just told him, Hey, you're, you're rattled right now. Everyone's been rattled. I've been rattled, you know, so you just need to calm down and rip it. Don't hesitate. I want you to throw it harder. You know, that's the way I got over it. Like when I was knew I was rattled, I threw it as hard as I could. And, uh, and then he got into rhythm. Once he hit the one to D the long one, uh, I think he calmed down. And uh, but he's got a demeanor about him. You guys met him. I mean, he's just got a, a weird. He's a great leader. I remember recruiting him, watching him talk to his siblings, and and the way he he communicated with them. It was in his living room that I, I looked at, uh, I looked at the other coach that was with me, saying we might have something special here, just because it's the way he presents himself. And um, and when they're against drop eight, that's hard. You got to make big time throws, hard, high and hard throws, and. <laughs> Man, he showed he showed a lot of calm and cool, and and uh, it was fun. It was fun to watch him play. I mean, we got we got we have to be more consistent on offense. We got a lot of things to fix. We got to be better on defense. We got to get guys healthy. Um, but we fought to the end, and uh, the young kid played a great game, and and I, I'm I'm happy for him. Hey, Tim, what what does this do for your program? I know it's one game, right? But ESPN, it's nationally, we're talking recruiting. Uh, president Dunn, you know, your former president's on Twitter saying <laughs> great shots. Yeah. I, I mean, what does this do? I, I mean, you know, for you, the, the whole exposure of Western Michigan football and, and rec recruiting, because it is huge when, you know, you're going to be talked about for quite a while now. Yeah, when you get, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's always an honor to be on ESPN, any of the platforms, but especially ESPN 1. Uh, you know, in the um, in a game like this, and you know, everyone's watching. No recruits can come here, so they got to watch on TV. And you know, to watch this game and the way it ended and the way our kids fought, uh, you know, we gotta we gotta build on it. You know, and and it's uh, but yeah, I mean, I think it's a big win. I think they're all big. 
the way we won, I think, was the special part and the way they fought and the way we didn't play our best game and found a way to win, you know, and that says a lot about a team and because uh, there's so much we can do better and so much we have to improve on. Uh, but we just beat a good football team. Um, and, and we played 60 minutes to the last tick when it took it took it all. And um, and I hope people notice that. And, you know, representing this school, obviously, I'm an alum. I love this place. Um, you know, for this town, I mean, this is the first event we really put on as a town in, uh, in a long time. And uh, obviously, I thought it was organized. I thought it was well run. Um, and it was just great to have a game like this when we're on a national stage to showcase Western and Kalamazoo and and uh, really in our players and the way they fight. So I'm really happy about that. Um, I know the fan situation is totally out of your hands with, uh, you know, the uh, limited attendance here. But, um, you know, have you had a moment to think about um, the crazy just juxtaposition between, uh, you know, pulling off a thrilling one like this and just having a statement, you know, relatively quiet? <laughs> yeah, the cardboard cutouts were, didn't, they didn't make any noise. I was waiting on them to, to be loud. I told the guys before the game that the cardboard cutouts, they look cool, but no one, they're not going to be saying anything. But, uh, you know, we didn't, for the first time in the history of my tenure here, we never, um, we didn't have uh, everyone on the sideline. I don't know if you saw, but we had a, a lot of our players, you know, just trying to spread out our sideline as much as we could. We had some players sitting up in the first row right behind our bench. Uh, so they were, they were into the game and jumping around up there, which was fun. And obviously there was crowd noise. But, uh, you know, one thing about this team is they really enjoy playing together. You know, I could have told you that last spring. Uh, it, was a, it was a war when we went together. And, it's, uh, and they compete and they compete and they help each other up after they're to the edge of fighting after every play. And they're helping each other up. And, um, you know, this team, this team loves to play whether people are here or not, you know. And, uh, and I hopefully that showed. But man, it would have been awesome to have this place packed. I mean, this place—I don't know if they would have stormed the field or what—but it would have been, uh, it would have been a really cool environment because this place is a special place to play. Um, but we have to, we have to play the cards that are dealt to us. You know, we're fortunate to be able to play. We're thankful we able, we get to play, be able to play. I wish everyone could come watch, um, but until they tell us they can, we're gonna we're gonna play this way and and be thankful and hopefully represent our school. Uh, the right way, even though they can't come out and, and, and have our back or they can have our back at, at, uh, at home, you know?